This is Conservative Conversations with your host, I'm Reed. And I'm Frank. And today we're going to be doing our yearly predictions for the upcoming year, for 2023. And I'll start off with one of mine. Uh, I think it's a pretty easy one to make, but I believe we will find out this year if uh, Ron DeSantis is going to run for the president in 2024. Oh, yeah. Huh, and how do you feel about that? Uh, Oh, yeah, I'd like to see him do it. I mean, I I don't know who better at this moment. I suppose there could be a better candidate that comes along before the end of the year, you know, within time for them to sign up, (laughs) if you will. I definitely think he'd be the best candidate that there is. Yeah, definitely. And uh, I imagine if he is, he has pretty decent, I mean, if he does announce, he has pretty de- decent shot at being the nominee by the time 2024 actually comes around. Because he's pretty popular in Florida. Even a lot of uh, Democrats uh, in Florida like Ron DeSantis. Well, what do you think about that other Florida Florida resident who might run? Uh, do we want to say his name? I'm sure people know who we're talking about. <laughs> but I mean, that'll I don't think we have to, but that'll make a big mess of things, won't it? I think so, um, especially among the Republican Party. Uh, I don't think it'll be too much of a mess of things broadly. Because obviously I don't think a whole bunch of Democrats are going to vote for uh, Donald Trump, obviously. And if their nominee is Joe Biden, I feel like there's some moderate Democrats that would, you know, more favor Ron DeSantis than uh, Joe Biden if it were the, uh, the general election. So do you think that Trump would be wise enough to just step aside if... You know, if um, it was pretty clear that the consensus was with uh, DeSantis? I think so, yeah. I would hope so. Right. (laughs) That's the only thing I worry about is that that other Floridian. Mm -hmm. Not too sure about. Yeah, he's uh, certainly been quite the disappointment post-presidency, which is unfortunate. I mean... Had he not been so uh, him, I guess. I guess it's the same Trump he's always been. I think he could have had a decent shot at being the nominee, at least, for the Republican Party. I don't know how well he would have actually won, depending on who was at the top of the ticket for the Democrats in the general election. Yeah, I think that's a fact. Yeah. I think that if Trump ran, he probably would not. Secure a victory. Right. I don't have a lot of faith in that. I, I don't either. Definitely not anymore. Well, <clears throat> you know, I think I might piggyback off that a little sure. bit. Sure. Um, because, you know, we've talked about before how they made him the first president to be impeached twice. Right, yeah. Well, as a consequence of the Republicans taking over the House now, I wouldn't be surprised... Especially with, you know, what we've seen in the news these past couple of mm-hmm. days with Biden, you know, leaving uh, top secret classified documents all over the place. Right, yeah. Um, I heard they found one at his local Starbucks just yesterday. Yep. <laughs> and <I'm> just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> and mentioning uh, Joe Biden's documents, folks, you can check out a recent short uh, segment we did on YouTube only about Joe Biden's classified documents, is even the title of it. Be sure to check it out and leave us a comment on the video. Let us know what you think. Yeah, but it is interesting because now, you know, this has been dominating the news. The White House, as we discussed in the other, you know, which you just uh, Mm -hmm. sort of advertised there for us, um, they just keep denying, denying, denying. Right. So I wouldn't be surprised, and you know it's the power of the House Mm -hmm. to impeach. So I wouldn't be surprised if we saw impeachment. Now, Mm -hmm. maybe not within the year. Sure. But I also wouldn't be shocked. Right. I wouldn't either. They 
have definitely made it clear the House Republicans that they're going to uh, open all these different investigations on uh, Hunter Biden and Joe Biden. So I I would agree. I wouldn't be surprised if they did try to move for uh, some kind of impeachment. Yeah, well, and because because of like I said in the other segment we did on this topic, um, ever since I feel like the Clinton impeachment, it's just been this back and forth like a tennis match, mm-hmm. and it's like, oh, you impeached our guy, we're gonna impeach yours, we're right. gonna impeach. I feel like impeachment's been used more in this century yeah. than ever before. And so mm-hmm. it's just mostly in that vein that I think now that the Republicans have it, they're probably going to impeach Joe Biden sure. just so they can say that they did. Right. Um, so when, that's really part of it, too. Yeah, and, and ultimately it wouldn't matter too much because it's not going to go past the Senate. Right. So. Well, and that's part of it. That's part I mean, of that's the show. A good part, be, I mean, a good point because none of— the impeachments, they have never been found guilty. Mm-hmm. Remember, right. impeachment is just a process of bringing charges against right. Right. a sitting president. Yeah. And none of the presidents in our lifetime who have been impeached have been found guilty. Right. So it really is just like a big mock trial right. in a way. Yeah. <clears throat> well, my pro- next prediction sort of piggybacks off of what you were talking about with the documents. Uh, I think Joe Biden might not announce that he's going to run. And if he does, I think this has really hurt his chances of being the nominee. Because recently I was thinking about, and I haven't gone back to try to find the original report about the documents that were first found. But from my understanding, his lawyers notified... Uh, like the government or whoever, you know, the, uh, I think the National Archives, yes, they notified uh, somebody. Yeah. Well, who told the, the press? Did Joe Biden's people tell the press? I mean, this might, the answer to this might be out there. I just, like I said, I haven't gone back and looked at the original report because I don't imagine they would have ran to, you know, the Joe Biden administration would have ran to the press with this. So it almost seems like it could have been a leak from the FBI or somewhere. And uh, it's probably not going to be, you know, somebody on the conservative or Republican side making that leak. So I think uh, it's sort of a in- inside job from the Democrat Party, uh, so, so to say. Well, I mean, I get where you're coming from, but I almost would want to go back and look at that reporting like you suggest mm-hmm. because, I mean, I've heard this sort of conspiratorial talk. I mean, not literally to call what you're saying like a conspiracy sure. or anything, but, you know, they used to talk about using the 25th Amendment on Trump. They would mm-hmm. get all of his people together and say that he's incompetent. Then at the end, they were talking about how, no, they had actually been talking about all that 25th Amendment stuff because of Joe Biden, Mm -hmm. because he's, you know, his mind's not all there and everything. And um, so I've kind of heard this thing before of like, let's just get Joe Biden out of the way. Let's incapacitate him. Let's Mm -hmm. make Nancy Pelosi president or Kamala Harris or whatever. Um, I just see it as being, I, I mean, look. Look at who we're talking about and what we're talking about. Right. I bet it probably just came about sort of organically because, you know, I make the joke about how, oh, I, he just was found with uh, confidential materials at, at Starbucks or McDonald's the other day. But, I mean, he probably is. He's probably got little caches of stuff all over the place. Mm-hmm. And I bet it only took one story. See, that's organic. Something pops up, somebody notices something. One of his neighbors is helping him clean out his garage and says, my, oh my, look at this box of classified documents you Uh got here. Okay, and they go, whoops, we got a boo-boo. But that gets out. Maybe it's told to certain people in in his bubble, in his circle, Mm -hmm. right? And then maybe people scratch their head and say, well, wait a minute, he was caught with unclassified or classified documents. Well, wait a minute. 
what did I see in that closet the other day? And they go run over there and say, oh, look, I found some. So I wouldn't be surprised if it was just more like that. People saying, well, wait a minute, Joe has an office here. I wonder if I should go in there and take a look. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Yeah, and then I they go, you. oh, I did fine. I'm going to call the FBI. Right. You know, it could just be nobody in one of his sure. office spaces or his cleaning lady or who knows. Right. <clears throat> but it's funny it's for me to think of like Nancy Pelosi, like scheming, like, hoo -hoo -hoo. <laughs> <laughs> you know, or, or Kamala Harris. I just feel like they're all inept, though. Yeah, so I get that. To, to do this, to plan it, to orchestrate it that well, it just seems kind of far-fetched. So we're talking about a guy who's leaving secret documents all over the place. Right. Well, I guess ultimately that was my prediction regarding that. It's, he's either probably not going to announce, or he's probably, if he just does announce his run, he's not going to be as enthusiastic, and I don't think he's going to get the nomination because people have been going on and on about these stinking documents for a couple of weeks now, and even the Democrats are... So. I don't think he'll run either. I kind of agree with you mm -hmm. because, I mean, basically the guy doesn't know where he is. Right. And nobody wants him to run. Yeah. So I don't think they're going to put him up there again or let him, you know. Right. <clears throat> well, that's interesting. Um, and one of the things, of course, that I'll be interested to see, I mean, I don't know exactly how much of a prediction this is, but... You know, now that the Republicans have the House, they have the gavel, is how I put it here in my notes. You know, they chair all these committees and everything, and um, they can call what witnesses they, they want, sort of. You know, they kind of get to dictate the rules, the parameters of committee hearings, and yada, yada. Um, so I've just sort of wondered um, what kinds of people they might investigate or what sorts of, like, big topics they might try mm -hmm. to tackle. Right. So um, just sort of a couple of the notes. I'll just say a couple of the notes I have, and then we can discuss it sure. more at length yeah. if, if you want to on any of them. But um, the first of all would be like the Section 230 thing with big tech, mm -hmm. you know, because um, I'll say another name real quickly, Fauci, Dr. Fauci. We have people like Rand Paul. They definitely want to go after Fauci mm -hmm. for all the pandemic stuff. Right. And there was a lot of collusion between the government and some of these big tech platforms right, things yeah. you're not allowed to post on facebook things you're not allowed to post on twitter about the covid19 facts and all this stuff right well here i'll say another nickname elon musk okay and you might say well what exactly is there to investigate there with elon why would he be brought forward to these committee hearings can you think of, of a reason that he and the new republicans might have something to talk about uh, I assume all of the Twitter file stuff. Yeah, the Twitter file yeah. stuff, exactly. That's what I was going for. Yeah. So I wouldn't be surprised if some of that types of stuff really got investigated. Those names that I said in particular were brought forward. Mm -hmm. um, and I think somebody like Elon Musk going up against somebody like Anthony Fauci and all this collusion right. stuff, I think that could really be a big show trial. Like People might tune in to watch that. Yeah, I mean, because a lot of people use these platforms, and I at least would hope the average American wouldn't, you know, wouldn't be, wouldn't like to hear that they've essentially been, you know, information that they've been seeing has been controlled this, you know, whole time. Well, not the whole time, but the past couple of years regarding certain topics, and these big tech companies. We're only letting people see the info that they deemed appropriate instead of various information, and it's up to the individual to discern what's right or wrong. Yeah. So well, yeah, I don't want to go into it too much, but there's a lot of subtleties to the to the um, collusion that right. they, and a lot of sh like shadow banning right, and stuff yeah. like that. You know. Um, they have these uh, computer bots or programs mm -hmm. that, you know. So anyway, I mean, there's there's a lot more implications than just saying we're not going to allow right. this or that. <clears throat> they actively suppress certain things, right? you know? Yeah. 
Yeah, I mean, that's, that's just it, that too. It's not just the information they're allowing you to see or not see. It's the information you're, you, you yourself are allowed to share. Right. Amongst the, the... When it's like stopping the organic transmission of information between people and everything, it's, it's like the opposite of commerce. Right. <clears throat> so it's strange to see a government behave that way. It is. It's, uh, you know, a bit corrupt and you know, cause for concern, definitely. Well, absolute power corrupts absolutely. But but that's true. <laughs> but I, you know, I think that is a pretty good prediction, and I just had a bunch of notes about it, but I think there might be a big showdown, show trial between mm-hmm. Anthony Fauci, Elon Musk, and maybe some other big names. Right, I... Definitely think it could happen. Um, well, one of my other predictions uh, is I'm going to sort of double down on what I made last year. It's regarding uh, China. Um, I believe last year I predicted that they would just be a little more aggressive on, on the world stage. But I believe, if not this year specifically, before we get a new president, I think they're going to make even more uh, aggressive moves towards Taiwan. Uh, I don't know if they will actually like invade or make some kind of an attack, but maybe more aggressive, um, uh, what do they call them, uh, like flight exercises, military oh, exercises, yeah. right? Uh, approaching into like the Taiwanese airspace and... Uh, maybe maneuvering their ships a little bit closer, stuff like that. Right. Uh, because um, partly, I believe, and I sort of teased this a while back when we uh, were talking about the Brittany Griner exchange and how that looked on the world stage. Yeah. And I think you know that's an example of a good reason why China might make more mo- aggressive moves because we look weak. Yeah, exactly. We, the, we will, goodness gracious, we, like you said, we look weak on the world stage. And it, if I were China, I wouldn't see any good reason that uh, this administration is going to stop them. Well, it is. They make so much fun of us in the Far right. East uh-huh. because of all this craziness, all the gender bending and mm-hmm. all the LGBT and yeah. all the. You know, um, what were you just referring to specifically? Uh, that like, was a good one. These, oh, the Brittany Griner yeah, thing. Mm-hmm. I mean, because that's where I was going. But if you remember, oh, this was my point. Beside all of that, the LGBT and, you know, the girls who wants to be boys mm-hmm. and everything like that. And then tr- these athletes getting themselves into trouble right. when they shouldn't be, when they know that the eyes of the world are on them. Uh-huh. Um, but if you remember, well, first of all, let me put it this way too. Some of that is bleeding into the military. Right. Now you can bet that Russia and China are laughing all the way to the front lines. Right. Uh, when they see stuff like that. Well, I mean, that's, that's a good point that you say that because there was a video of the, the, the guy that we traded for Brittany Griner not long after the trade, where he was talking about on yes. Russian TV, speaking in English. I saw that interview. How how our country has declined and stuff like that, and yep. all this transgenderism stuff well, like that. Well, that's sort of where I'm coming from when right. I say they mock us. Right. They, they cannot believe how, you know, how, I would say open, but that doesn't really make sense. How progressive, I'll say, right. the government has become with some of this. But the biggest point to me, the really you know, cherry on top right. was Afghanistan. The withdrawal of Afghanistan yeah, definitely. under the leadership of this president, mm-hmm. Joe Biden, the death of what was it? 12 or 13, uh, yeah, like 13, I think Navy seals or whatever they were. Um, just terrible. Right. Now that's a real, you know, all the LGBT stuff. Okay. Have a laugh. Yeah. But we're talking about dead American soldiers. It's mm-hmm. like Hillary Clinton. It's like Benghazi 2.0 right. all over again. And that makes us look weak. And when you put it all together, you know, all under the helm of 
that guy, Joe right? Biden. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, I think you've got a great point that it probably will be before the end of his presidency. I think that's makes a ton of sense. Yeah. And, you know, they've been talking about this forever. Right. And it's funny that you called the, the Afghanistan thing uh, Benghazi 2.0, because in that same episode when we talked about the Brittany Garner exchange, I called it Berg, Bo Bergdahl 2.0. Oh, yeah. Which was the during the Obama administration where we traded the deserter, military deserter, for five terrorists. Yep. I mean, these are some smart swaps we're doing right. here. I mean, that's a good right. point, too. You know, we're trading whatever she is, basketball stars, right. for vicious war criminals. Yeah. It boggles the That line. is some 3D chess right there. <laughs> right? I mean, clearly the winner in that exchange has to be Russia. Oh, no, it had to be Joe Biden. <laughs> of course. Yeah. That's, Free Britney. That's what they'll tell us. That was. I remember that. Everybody, mm-hmm. my great-grandmother called me up from the dead and said, Free Britney. <laughs> that was the most important thing that happened that year. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Yeah. But yeah, I definitely think... Uh, you know, China's still going to advance their aggression because I, I doesn't seem like they have any good reason not to. No, it makes sense. Yeah, I think you're right. Well, one of the things I don't know if it's a prediction or not because it's so open ended. But what if I were to say that I predict that the war in Ukraine will end by the end of the year? That what? The war in Ukraine oh. will end by the end of this year. Um, Does that seem far-fetched? No, I I don't think so. Um, I just kind of think, like, how long can this go on? Right, especially because, uh, you know, particularly the House Republicans, a lot of them are not uh, that interested in sending... More money. More money to Ukraine. Amen. That's part of my problem, too. Right? And I don't know if this would have too much of an effect within Russia on the war, but it almost seems like Putin's practically on his deathbed, crawling his way towards it. I've, I've heard a couple of reports that he's not doing very well. Well. So if he, you know, if he were to pass this year... Uh, I certainly don't know anything about Russian politics, but it seems like it could be a possibility the person who takes over is not going to be too interested in trying to carry on the war because Russia's lost a lot. Oh, yeah. It's, this is, from what I understand, this is not uh, a, an easy war for them to keep continuing. Yeah. Well, war's hard on anybody. Sure. I mean, yeah, it, that's that's one of thing to think about too I mean it's not just uh, you know the military of Ukraine and Russia against each other the government there's a lot of the, the citizenry of the, the countries that well, are of course affected governments by are this. only made up and funded and created by yeah. people and people's efforts and things so yeah that makes a lot of sense of course they would be suffering in some mm-hmm. some way maybe even some extreme way I don't know right <clears throat> So I, I just hope it doesn't happen here. Yeah, of course. That's another thing why I'd like to see it end. You know? Because if it could end there, maybe we won't end up going to war at some point. Right. But I kind of feel like maybe it's marching the other way. Hmm. You know? Maybe. Well, I guess time will tell. But I, I definitely don't think it's that uh, far-fetched. That, uh, well, and part of it is I think this is all like political theater mm-hmm. to a lot of it. You know, now obviously there are some people in Ukraine and people in Russia who are being affected by this. But I think there are larger things at work, you know, over there in Ukraine. There's a lot of interests, a lot of money yeah, yeah. Uh-huh. going on. So I just think in a way it'd be good if they could just stop the whole war part, the bombing and everything, and just figure out what they're doing. You know, is Russia going to buy Ukraine or not? Isn't that really what it all comes down to at the end of the day? Money. Right, yeah. Um, Money, resources. Land, which Mm -hmm. is resource. But yeah, that's essentially. 
who's going to win the Ukrainian Russia war? <laughs> uh, well, from some you know, different videos and stuff I've seen people talk about, uh, it almost seems like it's going to come down to Ukraine's going to have to just give up the bits of land that Russia has already taken over. Yeah, but from what I heard, Russia has a bunch of property that they can't even control right mm. now. So I don't get what what it's all about. I mean, I know it has something to do with like natural gas or something. I watched this great documentary on it, but I just don't remember all the finer points right now. And you know, I've right. kind of been callous about it that I Sure. I think there's a lot more going on than we're led to believe and I haven't really followed it that closely. Right. When I see everybody put a bumper sticker that says, I stand with Ukraine, I stand away from Ukraine. Okay? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, especially because mostly people who just slap these stickers on their bumpers and their Ukraine flags and their Twitter profiles, they're only doing it because it's trendy. Yeah. They don't know anything about the situation. When I don't either, but I know well enough to uh, sort of stay away yeah. and not just repeat the lines and right. stuff. So I'd like to see it end. I hope uh, yeah, I definitely would too. It'd be, it'd be good. Um, and I guess one of my last ones I have uh, is that I think our large city uh, crime problem is not going to get any better because uh, there has been a couple different uh, laws passed uh, for this year that took effect this year that. Yeah like reduces penalties for s- certain crimes and stuff like that. And um, uh, one particular instance is in California regarding like juveniles. Uh, they have this weird set of rules where like for major crimes, uh, if a student commits one, they'll be, well, I shouldn't say major because I, I don't know exactly what all crimes it entails. But for certain crimes, they'll get sent to, like, a a social worker. And this could be an instance of, um, like, if a student brought a gun to school, they'd like to go talk to a social worker uh, because of that. But if they wear, like, an offensive clothing or they're caught uh, painting swastikas on the wall, they'll actually be... Charged with a criminal, well, not charged, but uh, uh, yeah, charged, charged with a criminal offense rather than talking to a social worker. So stuff like that, it maybe doesn't directly incentivize bad crime, but it doesn't uh, well, it deter does. it. Well, I, okay, I guess it, yeah, I guess it does incentivize it, but I'm I, I'm mostly going for it. it doesn't deter the crime as much. Well, I see what you're saying, but yeah. I think it's interesting that you would say incentivized yeah. because— It does seem like I mean, it certainly would. Well, the first thing that flashed in my mind was back to the days of, um, oh, what's his name? That pretty boy out there in California, Get Newsom. Uh-huh, yeah. Where all those trains were getting robbed oh, over, yeah. and mm-hmm. over and over and over and over. And I remember saying to myself at the time, why would anybody send th- trains through— California. Yeah, <laughs> pretty much anywhere in right. California, but especially San Francisco or wherever they were robbing L.A. Mm-hmm. I don't think so. Stay away from L.A., I'd be saying, you know. Right. But, <clears throat> yeah, instead, I mean, it's the same. We've seen it in New York. We've seen it in California. We've seen it out in Portland. Mm-hmm. And now they're, t- they're taking it from the streets, and we're talking about over 18-year-olds and adults mm-hmm. playing out in the streets. And now we're taking it into the schools. Yeah. And we're going to say, okay, little Johnny boy, guess what? It's trickled down. Mm hmm. And now, you know, you can go over there and slap Sally around and we'll look the other way. But man, if you draw up something naughty on school property, uh huh. Straight to the clink. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I, I mean, mean, it's crazy because they're only protecting their interests, right. not the child's, not the greater of societies. Of course. Mm-hmm. And another I mean, more recent uh, example is in Washington, D.C., the city council or whatever, 
was trying to pass some bills to reduce penalties for pretty major crimes. I think even like homicide, stuff like that. But luckily, to her credit, the mayor has said she plans to veto the bill because she actually doesn't think it will help the crime problem that's currently going on in Washington, D.C. But it's, I mean, just the effort of the council alone to want to do it suggests that they're certainly not that concerned with with the crime problem if they basically want to make it easier to get away with the crimes with lesser penalties and stuff like that. Well, did you see, speaking on this topic, the first thing that popped in my head was we've just recently had a slew of uh, laws passed here in Columbus, Ohio. You know, the city's been sort of, I don't want to say at war, but uh, let's say feuding with the state about these new open carry laws. You know this? Uh, I actually don't. I haven't been uh, heard too much about it. Well, the city at first tried to pass a law that said that there was no such thing as legal concealed carry inside the city. Hmm. And the state pretty much laughed their butts off about right. that because city law does not trump state, state law. law. Uh-huh. <laughs> so open carry stands or right. whatever concealed the legal concealed carry that Ohio has now. Right. That's constitutional what I mean. carry. Yes, that's what I mean. Yeah. Uh, no, constitutional carries if it's just out on your hip. Oh, we okay. have legal uh, concealed carry here in Ohio now. Okay. Well, I just uh, my understanding was just open carry means you just have it on your hip and constitutional. Well, constitutional carry has always been done. right out on your hip like a cowboy, uh-huh. where anybody can see it. Huh. Okay. So that's constitutional carry. But what makes it unconstitutional is when you conceal a weapon. And try and take it in places and stuff mm-hmm. like that. But they made it here in Ohio. You have the right to conceal carry. And you don't have to have a permit or be specially licensed for it or anything like that. Right. Well, the city has been horribly upset with that. So at first they tried to pass a law that said, you can't do that in Columbus. Mm-hmm. Well, that got slapped down. They got laughed at. So just today, I heard on the news coming home from work that uh, they passed a law or a couple of them that reduce the number of bullets you can have in a magazine. They require gun-holding citizens in the city to keep their firearm away from a child. Like, I'm not even sure what this means. Like, are they (laughs) requiring that you have a gun safe? Are mm-hmm. they requiring what well, I don't get this? Are they going to come inspect your home and and right. fill out yeah. a checklist There's and like make no sure it's approved? Arm, it's right. Like. And there was something else too. I can't remember what it is. Maybe what color your guns are. I don't know. But they're making all these rules on guns. They're like going crazy about the guns. Uh-huh. Because they can't believe the state did that and passed the constitutional care or uh, excuse me, concealed carry. So yeah, I mean, that was, I don't know that it tracks super well, but you can just tell that they are sort of misusing the city's power, chasing a, a, a sort of imaginary rabbit, uh-huh. you know, <laughs> that they're not going to catch. <laughs> so it's funny, and the model will probably be picked up and shown elsewhere, you know, some of these mm-hmm. laws or, or these laws have probably been adopted from elsewhere that they've yeah. done. Well, I know it wasn't uh, too long ago that uh, West Virginia had passed the, the same kind of bill uh, for legal concealed carry. It's been a couple of years, though. Yeah, yeah, West Virginia did do that, too. Because I remember I worked in taxes at the time, and the state, they still encouraged you that you um, mm-hmm. take a get class. Get your license. Yeah, yeah, and get your license. That's exactly right. But if you did that, um, they would actually give you a credit on your state taxes mm-hmm. for having done so. Yeah, I think the cost of the license back. I think it's neat too. Yeah, I think that's a great program because then you're still pushing education and right. safety. Right, but it's not necessarily required. Right, it's encouraged by the government, which is good. It encourages responsibility and for the education. Firearm. Yeah. Yes. Mm-hmm. Exactly. But yeah, I think uh, it will be interesting to see what happens when in, in our inner cities with. 
these various laws that they're trying to pass. Yeah, good luck to them. Yeah. They're not going to fix the inner cities, I'll tell you. Uh, no, I think it'll definitely be a while. The best person who tried was Trump with those opportunity zones. Oh, Great yeah. idea. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I think it's the model, I dare say. How else are you going to go in and clean those places up? Yeah. I mean, it. It is. I mean, it's very nuanced issue. Yeah. Because you can't get businesses to go in there and invest if you don't have safe neighborhoods. Right. Because what, what Walgreens just to pick a company? Sure, but great example. Yeah. What Walgreens is want to go to put in new locations when they have a likelihood of being robbed and vandalized, and Wal- Walgreens is a good example because. Lately, they've been pulling out of some of these uh, Chicago. cities. Yeah. So, I mean, if, if you can't get businesses to build in the community and provide jobs for people to, you know, better their lives and, you know, earn money a good way instead of being out on the street dealing drugs and guns and stuff like that or being homeless or what, whatever the case may be, it, it's hard to, hard to improve the 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 communities if you're just gonna make it impossible for good improvements to happen well i think it also depends on where you look too because there are certain people who support Lori lightfoot Mm -hmm. you know even though she's a thug and she's a bully Mm -hmm. when all the walgreens pull out of chicago she's able to say well they are racist yeah you know and people still Lap that stuff up, even though mm-hmm. they look around, their streets are a mess, yep. they don't have any Walgreens, they can't buy milk, they can't buy bread, right. you know, everything's sky high, run down, right. people are dying, left, right, and center, mm-hmm. and still they keep voting for Lori Lightfoot. Right. So how is that? I don't get it. I, see, that's the thing. I don't know how you're ever going to fix mm-hmm. that kind of problem. Yeah, I mean... <clears throat> They, the the Demo- Democrats talk about institutional racism. I mean, this is a, I wouldn't call it institutional racism itself, but this is an institutional problem because they just keep voting in the same types of politicians yeah. that keep promising you no know, everything to them and giving nothing or just simply doing nothing at all. Yeah. So it's a, like a vicious cycle. Yep. When some people, what's unfortunate is they're really taking advantage of the people that can't get up and move. Right. Yeah. Yeah, because like, for whatever reason, they can't afford to move. Most of the times, that's what it is. You yeah. li- you live in these poor neighborhoods where you're, you know, you don't have probably very good jobs to even afford to save up to move out of these crappy neighborhoods. Mm-hmm. So you're just s- stuck there in the vicious cycle. <laughs> it's a big problem. But, uh, terrible. Yeah. Well, I think that's a good place to end. That was a pretty, pretty good conversation. I yeah, felt I like. enjoyed that. But yeah. you, I forgot the one about. Oh, your your big your biggest prediction. Yeah. Yeah. All right. What it was it? I think this will be the year that the aliens finally make contact with us once and for all. Well, I'll be looking forward to it. Finally, <laughs> put all the. The uh, conspiracies, the rest. Maybe they'll tell us if they actually built the the pyramids oh. and the Stonehenge and all that stuff. I hope they have the cure to cancer when they come. Um, that'd be great. Yeah, and like some kind of booze <laughs> where like you're never Alien hungover. Booze. Yeah, alien booze with no hangover. Uh, that'd be great. Yeah, well, I mean, <laughs> I don't know if we'll see aliens this year, but... Uh, it, well, it, if you've it, been watching the government stories, uh, yeah. sounds like we might. They're just ticking up, 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 up. It's like every pilot who's ever been in the air has seen an alien. Uh huh. <clears throat> well, I think I believe in aliens before I believe in ghosts, uh, but I just don't know how likely it is we will see the aliens. So. Do 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 do. That's probably <laughs> trademarked. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> whatever it was my impression of it that's fair use yeah yeah all right 
Well, folks, if you enjoyed this conversation, please be sure to subscribe on YouTube and on most major podcast platforms, Apple, Spotify, uh, iHeartRadio, and whatever you are listening to this great podcast. And be sure to check out our website at contemporaryconservative.net for more content and material. And as always, thanks for listening.